Hi guys, my name is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I am doing my 35 week pregnancy update. I can't believe there are only five weeks left until I'm like full term, like 40 weeks. And it's also been kind of a whirlwind pregnancy as you guys probably already know if you guys have been following along with my updates because we moved during the pregnancy and all of that. So it's a little bit shocking that I'm like already this close to the end. But I hope you guys enjoy this update and let's get right into it. So my baby center app is saying that the baby's the size of a honeydew melon. It's just really fun to fo like follow some sort of pregnancy app and see like what random what, what random thing they compare the size of your baby to because sometimes it doesn't quite make much sense, but it's fun to follow and kind of see what things are developing each week and like developing on your baby or like different symptoms that can be normal for moms. It's just like kind of interesting to me, but I'm also a little bit of a pregnancy nerd. <laughs> my belly feels even lower than my last update, which I'm not sure it actually is or if I'm just like tired, but it just feels like it's sagging lower and lower. <laughs> but it'll be really interesting to see if this is a boy or a girl because with Sophia, my first, I don't feel like I was as low carrying. With my son, Dimmy, my second, I carried really low, but I wasn't sure if that was because he's a boy, because everyone says boys carry lower, or if it was because he was my second pregnancy. So it could be because more pregnancies, you can carry lower because you're more tired, <laughs> or if it's like a gender thing. So we'll see. I've just been getting more and more Braxton Hicks contractions, and I feel like they're just really coming like a lot of them all at once because I didn't start them as early as I did with my last two pregnancies. I started them like 10 weeks later than I normally do. So, but then now there's like a lot more of them in this shorter period of time than there were last time. So a lot of contractions and I've also been getting quite a few tra contractions that feel like prodromal labor contractions. They're not just a tightening of the stomach like a Braxton Hicks, they're actually like a intense like labor contraction that some of them like if I'm sitting down and I get one of these contractions I I'm just like stuck there until it goes away because it's like really intense like I can't get my body to stand up if I want to and then like if I'm walking I might have to stop and breathe through it so I do remember these contractions from when I had my son Demi because I had like two or three weeks of programmal labor so this is a very familiar feeling and so we'll see if I have as many prodromal labor contractions is with him because that was a lot. I've also been dealing with some pubic bone separation, which is a bummer. I had that a bit with Dimmy's pregnancy, my, my last pregnancy, but I don't think it started until a little bit later than this. And I don't remember it being this painful. So I'm sure with more pregnancies, it can happen sooner and it can be just worse as your body is just like, it loosens up faster and all that. So it's like the left side of my pubic bone, it just feels like a little bit <laughs> like tearing feeling when I'm like walking or especially rolling over in bed is like excruciating. So I really have to be uncomfortable and want to roll over bad to be willing to roll over. <laughs> and it's like a whole production. Like I have to try to really hard to keep my knees together so my pubic bone doesn't feel like it's ripping out too badly. And then like, I can't use my ab muscles too much because my round ligaments will cramp and I can't use my like calf or shin muscles too much because I get really bad like leg cramps during pregnancy. So my muscles might cramp. It's just like this whole ordeal that takes like several minutes long. And there's a lot of like loud grunting noises that go on. I'm really surprised I don't wake my husband up whenever I have to roll over. But I'm like starting to seriously consider like waking him up to help me every time I need to because it's like getting ridiculously hard. <laughs> so I did go see the chiropractor for it, but it did not stay in very long at all. And I know a lot of people have said it's just, I mean, if you can go consistently, it helps, but it's just not gonna like stay in for all that long because your ligaments and everything are just so loose around there that it's just gonna like fall right back up. So I'm not sure I want to spend the money on it. And especially since now we live almost 40 minutes away from our chiropractor where with my last pregnancy we lived 
like three minutes away from that chiropractor. So I was just more willing to go on a regular basis. But now with two kids and we live further away, it's just feeling like a big ordeal. I'm like, well, I'll just power through a little bit more. I asked over on Instagram for some advice on like kind of managing the pain of it. And you guys had some really good ideas for it that I've been doing and it seems like it's really helping. So one of them was trying to keep your legs together, like keep your legs parallel. So if you're rolling over in bed, trying to keep your knees together, like just pinch together so that you're not using too much of those like inner thigh muscles that are near there to like, if you know what I mean, to like pick just one leg up at a time. So that seems to make a huge difference. If I can keep my knees together while I'm rolling over in bed or while I'm like, because it can be really painful getting up out of bed when you swing your legs over the side, but if I can keep my knees together and my legs parallel when I do that, it's a lot less painful. So that's been a really helpful tip. Also keeping legs parallel even while you're getting dressed, which is really difficult. So I have to sit down to put my underwear and pants on and try to like keep my feet at the same level, which is really difficult because I have like no ab muscles either. <laughs> So I kind of just have to like lift up my toes and put the pants over my toes and then like put my toes down, lift my heels and then pull them on my legs. It's like a little ridiculous, but it's, it is seeming like it's helping it not get too much worse. And because before when I get dressed and I would stand there and lift one leg up at a time to put my pants on, like every normal human does, it would be like pretty sore for a while after that and now I'm noticing it's not so I think it's helping. Uh, another thing is having a pillow between your knees at night. So I pulled out my big pregnancy pillow from my last pregnancy and I make sure it's in between my legs when I'm sleeping so that my my hips are more parallel and they're not like, you know, if my knees are going together then that's not as good on your hips or your pelvis. So it keeps my, my knees more like parallel with my hips and that seems like it really helps. Plus it's also nice to have a little bit of a barrier between my belly and my husband because he's a little bit more of a, a rough sleeper. So it's nice to know that I have like a, a padding there so he won't like accidentally knee me in the stomach. <laughs> and then the last tip was no um, like strenuous pushing. So, or even not strenuous, just like no pushing anything weight bearing. So no like pushing strollers. So when I take the kids on a walk, I will just carry Dimmy now and have Sophia walk. I won't push them in the stroller. No pushing shopping carts. The other day I actually forgot this and I pushed a pretty heavy shopping cart full of dog food. And I was like halfway through the parking lot and I was like, oh, I remember I wasn't supposed to do this and it was, I was pretty sore afterwards, so I shouldn't have done it. But I wouldn't have thought that pushing things did anything to your uh, pubic bone like that, but apparently it does. So that's good to know. A lot of people recommended like using like a baby a baby wrap to like kind of wrap around your your hips and your pelvis, or like that medical um, stretchy tape stuff, or like there's there's different things you can do where you wrap your hips and your pelvis and your pubic bone to like kind of keep everything held together. I'm not quite motivated enough to do that yet because it seems like it'd be really hard, like just really inconvenient every time you have to go to the bathroom and with how often I have to go pee when I'm pregnant, I just haven't really wanted to deal with that. But if it gets worse, more painful, I may consider it. My hips have also been really, really achy at night. So I've noticed there's two things I can do before bed that will can really help them not be achy. and. One is taking an Epsom salt bath. It's kind of an ordeal to take a bath every single night, but it helps me sleep well enough that I think it's worth it. I'll probably start doing it every night. So soaking an Epsom salt bath with some essential oils that are just more relaxing. And then after the bath, putting on my magnesium lotion like on my hips and thighs. And then also I like to do it on my shins and calves because my muscles cramp there, down there. But having the Epsom salts and then the magnesium lotion on my hips, it seems like it really helps them not ache as much at night, which is really nice because that's just like really painful. The other night I almost got up in the middle of the night at like two o'clock and took an Epsom salt bath because they were just aching so bad. It was ridiculous. But I did eventually fall asleep and it was okay. Let's show you guys the bump now. So here's the bump. I feel like it's just really low. 
like the baby's just sitting right down here and there's like it's just like squishy up here and like firm down here like they're just like really sitting lower I feel like so this has been my uniform as of late is like some really loose comfy linen shorts and my loungewear tops so because I don't really like I don't really like having stuff like on my belly if I can help it I'll I'll put a shirt on if someone comes over but I'm really liking these I'm really liking these loungewear tops because they have enough coverage that I I feel like I can wear it as a shirt and just let my belly be out and it's so much more comfortable I'm telling you what so not a ton new stuff just a lot of new aches and pains and I've probably just been a little bit too active with this pregnancy and so some of this stuff has started a little sooner than it did with my other ones my adrenal stuff is mostly the same. I'm noticing like little little improvements here and there. It's just gonna take a long time to heal adrenal stuff though. But all the things that I talked about in my last update that I've been doing for my adrenal stuff, I'm still doing and they seem like they're starting to help. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and go watch that one. It's my 33 week pregnancy update. But anyway, I think that is all that I have for you guys today. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, but I've been talking long enough. So thank you for watching this and I will see you in my next video. Bye.